The Nonprofit Podcast, powered by DonorBox. What if I told you that the last three days of the year could make or break your nonprofit's annual fundraising goals? It might sound dramatic, but year-end giving is that powerful, and it's right around the corner. Welcome to the Nonprofit Podcast. I'm Jenna Lynch, Education and Community Engagement Manager here at DonorBox. We are here each week with practical actions you can use today to increase donations and take your nonprofit to the next level tomorrow. I'm here with my colleague, Britt, fundraising strategist here at DonorBox to talk about year and fundraising events. Britt, it's always great to have you. Thanks, Jenna. It is always so fun to chat, especially this time of year. We all know things are starting to heat up. I know, right? Fall is right around the corner, and we all know this is the time for nonprofit fundraisers. There's just something about year-end giving. People slow down, they reflect, and suddenly seem a whole lot more generous. So, Britt, what makes this season so special, and what can nonprofits do to really make the most of it? Such a good question, Jenna. This year, especially after everything the world is going through, I think there is this growing urgency around issues like humanitarian aid, mental health, climate change, and people are feeling these things personally now, right? It's making them want to step up and contribute, I think, more than ever. And I really think this is why year in giving is so important. We all know that Giving Tuesday, it is definitely a fantastic day for fundraising. We all love it. But here's something that might surprise our listeners. Year in fundraising really starts in October, builds up with Giving Tuesday in late November, and then hits its peak in December. In fact, there is a 2024 MNR benchmark study that says nonprofits pull in a third of their total online revenue just in December. We also know that most of the donations are pouring in in the last three days of the year. We're getting ready for the holidays, right, Jenna? We all love to travel. We're going to start socializing. It's going to get busy. Nonprofits should already be planning their year end events now. Don't wait until the last minute. This is your prime time to get your strategy together. Yes, that is so true. And that is something that I always try to drive home, that Giving Tuesday is just the kickoff to year-end fundraising. But you really should start your planning now. It's September already. So with all of that urgency, though, it feels like there's so much to juggle, right? We know from experience just how much for sure. And even if a nonprofit has a solid plan for their year-end fundraising event logistics, they might still struggle with growing their attendance and keeping people engaged. So I would love to get from you some advice for those who may be feeling a little overwhelmed by all the moving parts when it comes to not only navigating all the things that come with year end, but especially year end fundraising events. So you and I, we talked a lot about this idea of experiential fundraising. I remember we did an episode, I believe it was 103, Turn Donor Interactions to Impact. Well, experiential fundraising, it's extremely relevant during the year-end season. Donors aren't just looking for another gala or an auction where they're passive participants. Nonprofits really are wanting to reimagine their events because they really want to make their donors feel active and along for the journey. And so what I think this means, Jenna, is looking at three elements. Personalization, sensory immersion, and heightened emotional connection. I like how you're breaking these things down into categories. So can you provide us with some concrete examples of what you mean by these focus elements? Absolutely. I am a big fan of let's not complicate things and keep it simple. My suggestion is this. Tailor one event to different donor segments by weaving in all of those different layers of experiences within the same event. Let's break it down. Three actionable tips for all of our listeners tuning in. Number one, make your event personal for different donor groups. Think of your donors like friends. Our friends have different likes, dislikes, unique taste and interest. Which events do they love? Which events have they skipped? Are they one-time event type of people, regular type of people? 
an event for your lifetime donors. It might be a VIP reception where they get early VIP access for a meet and greet right before your main event kicks off. For your new donors, um, I think a lot about my friend who is a development director at a nonprofit that supports educational programs for children with special needs. What she did, which was fabulous, is she created interactive stations where they could engage in hands-on and immersive activities and learn about the programs that way. And for major donors, that might look like showing your appreciation with something extra special. This could be a personalized thank you video or a handwritten note after the event. I think that's a great tip. And I'll chime in here as well. What I love most about DonorBox CRM is its ability to go beyond just that basic segmentation and really get into the nitty gritty of what types of events each donor might enjoy. So this allows you to create meaningful experiences that resonate deeply with your different donor segments, which just makes them feel extra special, but also extra engaged, right? You should really be planning your events around the way that your different donor segments are interacting with your organization. Okay, so what is tip number two? Okay, you want to bring your event to life. You know, think about as humans how we connect with the world. We connect through all of our five senses. I have a daughter named Willa. She's seven. She has sensory disabilities. And she has shown me as a mother the power of a multi-sensory parenting approach. When she and I, you know, we really connect in our environment and we tap into all of those five senses, we're connecting on a deeper level. And I think, Jenna, this is how most of us operate, right? Think about, for our nonprofits listening in, tap into all senses in your experiences so that your guests aren't just passive spectators, but you're involving them in the full journey. Um, Let me throw out what that looks like. Touch, we've already talked about, incorporate those hands-on activities and stations so that guests can interact with items that really relate to your mission. Taste, who doesn't love food? Incorporate flavors from the regions you serve, from the you know ingredients that reflect the communities you serve, letting guests taste the spirit of your mission. Here, we all love holidays. Use this as an opportunity to share those heartwarming stories that let your guests hear firsthand how their generosity, especially during the holiday season, lights up those, those of the lives that you're serving. And finally, C. Get creative. One idea I absolutely love as a former fundraiser is use your end of year holiday event to create like a holiday gift menu. Donors can pick exactly how they like their donation to make a difference. It might be a $50 menu item to provide a holiday meal for a family or $100 to cover a month of education for a child. With this holiday gift menu, what you can do is you can set up live kiosks or tablets around your physical event space where guests can browse these menu options and make donations right then and there. And to top it off, Jenna, to kind of give that warm and fuzzy personal touch, guests can dedicate their holiday gift in honor of someone they love. That is such a unique approach, especially thinking about the sensory immersion in these interactive activities. And what's great about this approach is that you can really tailor it for your unique mission. And I'll go back to episode 103. Go ahead and take a listen because we talk more about these types of examples, one being Charity Water, which is a very well-known organization and how they incorporated that sensory immersion experience. Uh, There are a lot of really wonderful ways that you can do this. And it's just a fantastic way to keep donors engaged and invested in the cause. And also setting up the live kiosks or tablets around your space, you're just able to capture their generosity in the moment, which is really special. Okay, tip number three, tell us about that. Number three, simplify event planning with a CRM and event features. Let's be real, we all know this planning an event, big or small, is a juggling act. We're dealing with a million moving things. I was talking to a nonprofit today, Jenna. Their nonprofit is paying for a nonprofit events firm, but there's still a lot of work. Right. And so this is where the donor box CRM or any good CRM really comes into place as a trusty sidekick. We're all about working smarter, not harder. Let me throw out some of the cool features of donor box CRM. One, it keeps track of everything. 
We have to manage RSVPs, dietary restrictions, so many special requests, right? It's crazy. We could easily lose our mind. So it makes it easy to keep track of everything. We can set up automated friendly reminders, even add personal touches like parking details or, hey, this is the Pacific Northwest dress code. And what I absolutely love about it is it gives you the opportunity to analyze and improve. The Donor Box CRM gives you all of the data that you need. You can see what went well, what could be better. And frankly, as a former executive director, it is super helpful when you're showing your board just how successful, how fruitful the event was from all the hard work and love that you poured into it. And knowing what your donors love, it's going to make planning those future events so much easier. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. This is one of the things that I think that many nonprofit organizations miss. After the event has settled, of course, you're exhausted, but you need to pull those data-driven insights to see how your event made an impact so that you can start your strategic planning for the following year of events. So having a great CRM that you can easily pull reports from is such a game changer. And of course, the board loves to see that. Okay, but so what about for nonprofits who can't do an in-person event? And maybe they don't have the capacity, they just don't have the time or the budget. Do you have any tips for them this giving season? Oh, yes. I'm thinking of all of the younger, smaller nonprofits I'm actively coaching. I have you on my mind. And, you know, many of you may not have the resources for this big, fancy in-person event. And that is totally a okay consider hosting a year-end virtual holiday giving circle. It's easy, it's interactive, it's a great way to kind of engage your community without needing to do all the prep work and gather in person. A giving circle, for many of you who do not know what that is, it really allows people to come together to pull their resources virtually, and you can manage it all through a very cool, simple crowdfunding page on your fundraising platform like DonorBox. We have a client, Global Sojourns. They use the crowdfunding feature and they raise nearly $90,000 from 300 donors because they brought in families, they brought in coworkers, community members. In this online giving space, along with some in-person community events that were low time intensive and barrier to support educational projects in Africa. Yes, that is such a great option, especially for those smaller or newer organizations that might not have the capacity for a big event. Crowdfunding is a wonderful option. It truly is the gift that keeps on giving. Okay, this was a speedy episode, but before we wrap up, let's just remind everyone, if you have not started your year-end planning strategy, now is the time. Do not wait until the last minute. Do not do it to yourself. Oh, yes. Right. Exactly, Jenna. I always tell nonprofits the same. The sooner you start, the better. It's going to give you the chance to really connect with your donors in a meaningful way. Who No one wants to do the last minute stress and scrambling. Absolutely. Getting a head start means that you'll have the time to try new ideas and really make an impact. So, Britt, thank you so much for sharing these tips with us today. Always a pleasure, Jenna. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on the Nonprofit Podcast. I hope you've left with the confidence to take a small step today that will make a big difference tomorrow. Be sure to click the download button on your podcast player and leave us a review. If you're listening to the Nonprofit Podcast on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. Your feedback helps others find us. You're here to help others. We're here to help you. Until next time, stay inspired. That warm feeling when you help someone It's not just happiness, it's fulfillment. And we believe it should be available to everyone. From frontline heroes to first-time fundraisers, our tools empower you to help others. This is our mission. This is DonorBox, helping you help others.